Hey, what's going on, everybody? I love living in an age where we, in 2024, are still getting brand new games released on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And I want to talk to you today about Jester from Mega Cat Studios. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jay. Welcome to Square Pegs. Now, full disclosure, Mega Cat did send me this lovely copy of Jester on the NES. Now, full disclosure, Mega Cat did send me this for the purpose of review, but they haven't asked me to say anything specific. And the only thing that are not gonna be my words on this video are me reading off some of the facts from the Mega Cat website about the game, just to make sure I have all my information correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at Jester. Jester is a maze chasing adventure game where players collect elements and keys, defeat the guards, and explore each area. It's a retro style adventure and you step into the whimsical shoes of Jester, the King's Fool, on a mission to collect element items hidden in the heart of dungeons. You navigate through dark corridors, unlocking rooms with keys, and defeating guards with a mighty sword to secure bonus items. But time is of the essence as torches flicker, illuminating your path in the race to gather items and keys before the dungeon's shadows consume you. Now the neat thing about this is this is a love letter to La Fou de Roy, which was available exclusively on the defunct Video A cable service system in the late 80s and 90s in Canada and parts of the UK. Now, when I initially talked about this video on the short where I unbox things, I called it a mix of The Legend of Zelda and Pac-Man, and I think that is a fairly accurate representation of what the game is. You play as Jester, and each screen is kind of set up like a Pac-Man maze where you're gonna have four skulls moving around. Those are the enemies you have to face. Now, in order to defeat the enemies, you have to collect the sword icon that is on each screen, and you're gonna have a timer that is over on the right-hand side represented by a meter that counts down how much time you have left to defeat the enemies. And it's pretty clever. Like the thing I really like about it is that it kind of eases you into it because the first collection of levels, the first nine different screens that you're gonna have to go through to collect the items are fairly straightforward and simple. And the thing I really enjoyed about it is that it gives you a sense of confidence, a false sense of confidence that you think your skills are going to be sufficient as you move through the game because once you get to the second stage, the training wheels come off and the game no longer cares about your feelings. It just kind of pushes you down the stairs and steals your lunch money. But it's fantastic. It is exactly the type of game that I would have loved playing back in the day in arcades or on the NES or even on the Atari 2600. It's the kind of signature experience. From a visual perspective, the game looks great. It feels like a classic game that was just brought back to life. The graphics are solid. They get the point across. You know exactly what you're going after. Every item that appears on screen is identifiable. It isn't a question of, is that a torch or is that a carrot? You know it's a torch. You know it's the thing you're going to have to collect to make sure that the lights stay on so you can explore each maze level correctly. And be sure to collect torches, but not too quickly because you don't want to collect them to waste what light you have left because once that meter fills up, it immediately starts counting down again. I did run into a situation where I ran out of torches and I had no way to figure out how to get out of the level, which was frustrating to say the least, because I knew I did it too. Like I knew I was like, oh, I collected that torch too quickly, but I'll be okay. I was not okay. The game laughed at me. It made me die. I, I wasn't happy, but the game itself was addictive and it was fun. And it was something I kept going back to in order to complete the level. And like I said, once you actually get to a point where you understand what's going on, that first level becomes pretty simple. You can kind of set a pattern on how you want to go about things. As you unlock keys, the map is going to flash to show you where the key unlocked something. You'll see a green box appearing on screen. At least I think that's what it's doing. I don't, I, I'm, I'm believing that's what it's doing. I might be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. And the game itself is solid. It feels like an adventure quest version of Pac-Man, which I really dig. Being able to turn those enemies into the white skulls that instantly start running away from you and you collect the sword is satisfying and defeating them is great. And you want to make sure when you get that sword that you do defeat all of them because if you don't, they will regenerate when you come back to the room and the sword will not. And then it's just a game of dodging and running and making sure you don't get killed. I really do enjoy how this game looks because it doesn't need to be flashy. It doesn't need to be overly presented. It just needs to make sure that you understand what you're doing. You need to know that there is a maze you need to get through, you need to find keys, you need to unlock things, you need to collect items. It works. In that regard, it's perfect. I think about the only thing I don't really care about is that the game starts off with this a killer song on the press start screen. I think it's great. The music is fantastic on press start, but when you get into game, there's no music. It's a fairly quiet title. And that's a little bit disheartening because of how good the music on the press start screen was. I mean, the sound effects are fine, but it does decidedly feel like an Atari game in that regard because there's no, 
you know, background music or anything like that. It's just a sound effect when you collect something. And if you go into it knowing that, you won't be kind of disappointed by that, but I didn't realize that when I went into it. So getting that initial hit of music on the press start and then having no music in game, I was kind of like, oh, that's a bummer, just because of how good that initial press start screen music was. But it's still fantastic. It's still fun. And it's, it's not something that detracts from the overall game. It's just a, man, that would have been nice. Now, this is something that I really think a lot of people will enjoy. And the thing I really like about the work that Mega Cat does is that they are bringing forward physical games. And physical media for classic consoles is such an important thing towards preserving those consoles for use in future generations, as well as allowing people to develop for those consoles when they might not have the ability to afford something like a Switch dev system or a PS5 dev kit. You're able to get something like NES Maker or something along those lines and be able to develop a game using that. Now there are several different options here for physical releases for Jester. You can get the NES cartridge only, which is $49.99. There is a complete in box copy as well, which is awesome. It's got a classic kind of late NES release with that red stripe at the top that says what it's from. Uh, and it looks great. It comes with a box and a manual and the cartridge. That's $59.99. And then there's the limited edition cartridge, which is just ridiculous. It looks like Jester's head. It looks like the character art. Uh, it's sculpted. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. That one is $150. Now that is a specially molded piece of plastic. It's something that is unique. It has never been seen before. So understand that the cost there is necessary. So if you're looking for something that is a killer collectible for a game like this, definitely look into it. But if the NES isn't the kind of console you want to collect for, there is also an SNES release. Now the cartridge there also is $49.99 and the complete in box version is $59.99 just like the NES release. Now there is no special edition cartridge for the SNES, so do be aware of that. If you are looking for something that is truly unique, look for the NES cartridge and that special edition release. I want to thank Megacat for sending over this copy of the game. It is a lot of fun. It's a true challenging title and something that I wasn't anticipating enjoying as much as I did. Steeplechase games like this, if they're not Pac-Man, tend to kind of lose my interest very quickly and kind of lose my attention. But this one, this one held onto it very firmly and I think it's something that a lot of people will enjoy if you're a fan of classic gaming. Let me know in the comments down below if you've played Jester, if you have an interest in this. Check out the Mega Cat Studios link in the description down below. And remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.